A very good morning to you on this Palm Sunday morning to Beclivey and Gartmore Parish Churches and to this Beclivey Church this morning. The Messiah is come riding on a donkey. Hosanna to God and Hosanna in the highest. Come and rejoice, our King is here. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Sing and praise and give glory to God. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. We spread our palm branches and our cloaks in the way of the King of Kings as we bring our worship on this Palm Sunday morning. We sing the hymn, All Glory, Lord and Honour, to Thee, Redeemer King. So let us bring our prayers to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we remember this day how Jesus entered Jerusalem to cries of celebration, help us to welcome him afresh into our own hearts and lives. Accept the praise and worship we bring you and give us a real sense of expectation as we look towards his coming kingdom. Hosanna to the Son of David, and glory in the highest heaven. Gracious God, like your people long ago, we do not always see clearly. Our faith can be shallow and self-centered at times. 
We do not understand everything as we should. Our praise can be short-lived and superficial. But we ask this day, and as we go forward in this holy week, take the faith we offer, weak though it may be, and deepen it through this day and this week, so that we may truly come to welcome Christ as our King, and worship him with joyful praises, now and always. Let us bring our prayers of confession to God. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us that we go on making the same mistakes as on that first Palm Sunday morning. We profess to follow you, but in our own hearts, we follow our own inclinations. We can be self-centred in our discipleship, looking as much for what we can receive as what we give. We can be preoccupied with appearances, our external show disguising an inner poverty, which only you can see. We are ready to serve you when life is good, but reluctant when it involves the way of sacrifice. So come, Lord Jesus, Give us an assurance this day of your pardon and your peace. As we welcome you as the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Servant of all. Son of David, have mercy on us, for your name's sake, and in your name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 12. And reading verses 12 to 16. The next day the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. Amen. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. In March 2023, a number of, number of us are planning to visit the Holy Land on a pilgrimage. And if you would like to join that group, I think there's 11 currently on the list, uh, then please do let me know by the end of the month as we need to submit our numbers to the Church of Scotland. But one of the probably most famous journeys is to park your bus uh, on the Mount of Olives at Bethphage, and to walk down the hill into the Garden of Gethsemane from the Mount of Olives and then to go in through the gate into the city of Jerusalem. The Jesus journey on Palm Sunday was exactly this route. And I'm sure it will be a moving sight for those of us who are going in 2023 and for those of you who have already done such a journey. I'm told by a friend that there are a couple of men who still today uh, sell their donkeys for a ride so that you can copy the journey of Jesus down into the Garden of Gethsemane and into Jerusalem. The Bible insists that the story of the donkey, that the donkey was borrowed and that the disciples are sent ahead. And if anyone asks, just say the Lord needs it and we will bring it back to you. The act of borrowing catches our attention. And anybody who has heard the story knows how exciting the Palm Sunday story is. 
You remember as children making palm branches and lining the route for Jesus and the donkey. But in Jerusalem at that time, the Passover was near. The city would have been excited about the holiday time. And to join in the festival, there would have been thousands of people there from various parts of the country. And Jesus enters as the one who proclaims himself as king, but a king sitting on a donkey. All of us know the story. Jesus was born born and laid in a borrowed manger. As he travelled, he had no place, we're told, to lay his head of his own. And he travelled into the city on a borrowed donkey. He ate his last meal in a borrowed room, was wearing a crown of thorns given to him, and we're told that he was laid in a borrowed tomb. Jesus did not grab or grasp what did not belong to him but shared what was given to him freely. As the early church pondered the identity and character of Jesus in these words we read today, it declared that Jesus did not count equality with God as something to be grasped. Our Lord did not hold on to heavenly glory and throw his weight around on earth. He never forced himself on anyone and still doesn't. So Jesus emptied himself. He gave himself completely away for the benefit of others. I think that's a remarkable theme on this Palm Sunday. Jesus didn't own very much, we're told, the tunic on his body and the sandals on his feet. And even at the cross, they were taken from him. And maybe it's the same command given to us, particularly those of us in the West, when we are surrounded by such material things. When you go out to proclaim the gospel, take no money, no sack, no tunic, no extra shoes, we're told, and proclaim that God's kingdom is very near. At its core, the good news of the gospel does not need a lot of props. It simply needs people who believe and to take the message forward. We're doing a lot in our eco group looking at consumption and materialism. And I think we are guilty at times, aren't we, of owning and having too much. And maybe there are times when we need to have less and to borrow more. And then we ponder who are the real blessed ones in the story. Jesus says they are the people who don't have very much, the poor in spirit, those who mourn the loss of a loved one. Those who are meek, those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. These are the blessed ones, we are told. Blessed are those who keep a light grip on all that they have, for they know that everything in life depends on the generosity of God. They are the people who have everything. But most of all, Jesus' greatest possession was his love for every single one of us. His love was never needy but a, rather a willingness to give what he could for the well-being of those around him. And in the words of the early church, Jesus emptied himself. He humbled himself. And this is the kind of God that we glimpse in the man who borrows a donkey. Jesus manifests a God whose very being is self-giving. And so today on Palm Sunday, we remember how Jesus gives himself to the world. On this festival day, he rides a borrowed donkey into the centre of a city that in a few days will reject him. A person with few possessions, but he empties himself of all that he has. It's all for the benefit of the saving of the world. And God keeps doing this saving work in our lives and in our faith community, setting us free from selfishness and claiming us in the name of Jesus who owned very little, but who ultimately still wishes to possess our hearts. May we ponder this story. May we remember the walk of Jesus, the journey on a donkey into the centre of Jerusalem. And may we follow with him. May we be touched by his life. And may we know his blessing this day. Amen.
And so let us bring our prayers to God. Let us pray. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week and gather at your house of prayer, turn again our hearts to Jerusalem, to the life, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that united with Christ and all the faithful, we may one day enter in triumph the city not made with human hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens where you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in glory forever. Gracious God, you have called us to be the Church of Jesus Christ. And so we pray for your Church throughout Scotland and indeed throughout the world. Keep us faithful in service, in proclaiming the good news to the world. May the world turn to your ways and live in the light of your truth. Eternal God, you sent Jesus Christ to be our saviour, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. And so we pray that you will send your peace upon the earth and put down greed, pride and anger, which turns nation against nation. And so we pray for peoples oppressed this day, for the Rohingya people in camps in Bangladesh, for the Uyghur people in China, and for those standing up for democracy in Myanmar. Lord God, we pray for the day when wars shall end and the world may know your reign of peace. Almighty God, you are sovereign over all the nations. Guide those who make and administer and judge our laws. We pray for our Queen and for her family and for all who are in authority over us in London and in Edinburgh. And especially at this time in Scotland as we approach an election time. But guided by your wisdom, our politicians may lead us in the way of righteousness. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion today on those who are sick, especially those known to us. May they too, in body, mind or soul, know something of your grace and your peace. God of all comfort, stand with those who sorrow this day, for those known to us who are bereaved. Assure us and them that nothing can separate us from your love. God of all generations, we praise you for all your servants, who having been faithful to you on earth, now live in your nearer presence. Keep us in fellowship with them until we meet with all your children in the joy of your eternal kingdom. These are prayers, those spoken but the unspoken prayers of each of our hearts. We offer in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Lord. Amen.
journey into this Holy Week, walking in the footsteps of Christ. May facing hard things allow transformation of our being, that Easter light may be born in us, and the blessing of the God of light, creator, guide, and inspire, known also as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with us, now and always. Amen.